Don't consult experts. The mistake is to only consult experts. Gordon Welchman, when he left here, went to the US. He pleaded with them right up to 1990s. Right, when he was there, <laughs> will you please stop only testing your cryptographic systems on experts? Will you show them and test them with people who know nothing about cryptography at all? Because okay. they're more likely to probably break it. Okay. Uh, right, this is a bomb. At the front of the machine, there's the back of the machine. Uh, it's not a real one, it's a replica from the film. It's about a ten of them from the film, given to us by uh, Sir Mick Jagger, who was the man in fact behind the film. Also the submarines, you probably passed the little submarine. In the film, you see that at the end of the film in the Scottish Sea Lock. I'm afraid the big one, full-size conning tower section, I'm afraid is just disintegrated now. Uh, I mean, the film was several years ago now, and it was only meant to last a week, remember, while they did it in a water tank, so um, it's not surprising. And it just isn't economic, I'm afraid, to try and rebuild it. But certainly, when I first came here, you really had to go right up to it to see that it wasn't made of metal and steel, and, you know, in fact, it was only made of cardboard and fiberglass and amazing skill, these uh, uh, film production people. Anyway, the bomb... After almost certainly the Polish bomba machine, that's the Polish bomba machine, almost certainly, and again, this is a Hugh Davis explanation, but more or less confirmed this week, I hope. And when I had a group of Polish here about three years ago, I was explaining the operation of the machine, and I said, the current flows, and the machine stops, and the old shouted, bomba! <laughs> <laughs> so if you want, shall we say, uh, an English equivalent of a bomba machine, we call it a yippee machine, or a eureka machine. But it's perfectly sensible. It's because when the bomba machine found a solution, I believe it made some sort of noise, and you can imagine people in the polls going, bomba! <laughs> Why it's called a bomb, the French spelling, again, is my explanation, which I still think is sensible, and that is we must assume that the Germans when they occupy Warsaw and Paris, they find out about the Polish bomber machines. We must also assume, it's not true, because but we don't find that out until after the war, there are no German agents in England. We capture every single one of them. Okay? But we don't know that, to be honest, until afterwards. Um, but in fact, we must assume there are German agents about, and if they get to know that we're using machines called bomb bombs, they must assume they're a derivative of the German bomber machine. But they're not. They are nothing whatever to do with it. There is no similarity whatever. Alan Turing said the Polish method must stop working. The Germans must find out something. They must, so they must have to say, either discover or they must suss out that what they're doing is silly and stop doing it. And sure enough, they do. They stop it in May 1940 when they invade France. So the Polish method would not have worked after mid-1940. So Alan Turing said we must come up with a different way of doing it. So he came up with a totally different method, normally known as the probable word or crib. In other words, a crib is like, you know, you set an examination and you've got the answer written on the top. You wouldn't do this sort of thing, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you've got the answer written there, or you've got, or you've got a blackberry inside your own <laughs> But uh, that effectively is what's called a crib. Okay. Uh, so, but before we understand this, we want to know a little bit more about the Enigma machine. Because what you're looking at there is a simulation of 12 Enigma machines laid end to end in series. Another 12 there, and another 12 there. And that's the back of the machine there. The real bomb is done in Blee Block, and will be actually running sometimes today. That is what an Enigma machine actually looks like. And again, in B Block, you'll see actual machines. A bit for the older ones, a bit like an old-fashioned typewriter for you. That is what an old-fashioned typewriter is for. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's got a standard QWERTY keyboard, not QWERTY, continental keyboard. But it's not a keyboard, it's a lamp board. You press a key here, a wheel turns, and a light lamp. A lamp light. <laughs> okay. These are little torch bulbs. And again, you'll see them. If you go into that tent, you'll get a full detail view of the inside of an Enigma machine. Uh, now, it's the intelligence, if you want to put it that, and it's actually very, very simple, are these wheels, those three wheels. And those three wheels, this is a mock-up of it. 
And what you have is a wheel with 26 electrical contacts there and 26 contacts there. 26 letters, by the way, in Germany as well. For the umlauts and so on, of course, as you know, they, they, they're like O-E or U-E and things like that. Also, no digits. They'd spell them out, or they sometimes would do, I think, like a double Y, meaning figure shift. So 26 contacts there, 26 contacts there, a wire between a contact there and a contact there. There are at least, I'm still trying to work it out, two billion, billion, billion ways of wiring those wheels. But the first well, the machines had three wheels, so there were three sets of military wiring. Would you believe they kept that pattern of the first three wheels for 18 years? From the 1920s right up to the end of World War II. We never allowed any set of wiring of our types of machines to last more than 18 months before we changed it. Keeping something for 18 years is an act of extreme folly. But anyway, the other thing you notice is a tyre. Let's call it that. If that's an index, Mark, can you see I've set it to F? Can you see? Mm -hmm. Can you see? <coughs> but I can move it. I will set it now to, say, W. Okay. So that is independent of that. So there are 26 ways of setting that index mark known as the ring setting or ring stone. So the code book will tell you which three are the possible five wheels. The five at the end, and that's what screwed up the poles, because now they need, would have needed 60 bomber machines, and they only had six, because there are 60 ways of doing three out of five, but only six ways of doing three out of three. So, each wheel, therefore, has a, has a different set of wiring in it and a different setting. The other setting I have to do is to do the message setting, it's a circle, you understand? So I've got to start somewhere. Right? What, what letter is going to show through at the beginning? These are numbers, but very often they use letters as well. That's certainly in the earlier days. And what I'm meant to do is to twirl these thumb wheels so they stop in random positions. And then, can you please take it from me, there's something called the indicator procedure, where I tell the receiving operator what my start positions are, what my message setting is. Please just take it to me that there is a way of doing it. And that's what the Poles work on. That's how they break it, because the Germans do it twice. Basically, in cryptography, as this lady would tell you, to do anything twice is asking for trouble. Okay? To do it twice in the same thing. So, these three wheels. You press a key, and the right-hand wheel moves one letter. When it's done a revolution, the middle wheel will do one letter. When that's done a revolution, the left-hand wheel will go one letter. It's just like the mileometer in your car, except the base is 26 instead of the base instead of base 10. Okay. Now, I press key B and you get T. Say, it's a polyalphabetic cipher. I press B again, you might get Z. I press B again, I might get W. Which letter will I not get if I'm pressing B? Very good. Very good. <laughs> no letter can ever encipher as itself which is dumb. Okay? It means it's a certainty. The only unbreakable cipher is one that is genuinely random and is only ever used once. That's called a one time pad. It's what we use for sending messages out from Bletchley Park. No deterministic machine can produce true randomness. It's what uh, even a modern computer. It's what IT people call pseudo-random. Okay? But generally, nevertheless, on this machine, what you type in bears very little relationship to what you get out. It's a bit like Microsoft Word. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so you press a key, the right hand wheel turns, but that changes it, that changes it, that changes it. Come back out and it lights it now. So seven changes of, sorry, can then reflect it back again, okay, through the pro reflector wheel. Seven changes of, wheel, of letter between the keyboard and the lamp board. <coughs> there are 60 variations of wheel order. There are, each wheel can be set in one of 26 positions. So 26 times 26 times 26, which is what? <laughs>